follow-up calls are. We have a lot of different calls in place for our team. And these ones are just really going through the basic skills that you need to build an effective business online with marketing, affiliate marketing, network marketing. And, and let me just briefly, before I get into my, my segment here, um, many of you are familiar with the term marketing, correct? Many of you maybe have studied some type of marketing in school or have heard people talk about marketing. You, you hear about influencer marketing, social media marketing. At the end of the day, marketing is a huge part of business and a lot of businesses use marketing to their advantage. Even at your nine to fives, you could see how they use marketing to promote products, services, to, to promote campaigns to customers, to clients. Like marketing is huge. And there's different forms of marketing. There's uh, network marketing, social media marketing, influencer marketing, digital marketing, uh, all types of marketing, all types of titles for the marketing space. And the reason why marketing is divided into different titles is because there's different focuses when it comes to marketing. Now, a huge part of what we do is network marketing and affiliate marketing. So we combine both aspects. Now, yes, we use social media to market. So, you know, there's an aspect of social media marketing. Some of you are very into like the influencer lifestyle. So you can tie in influencer marketing. But at the end of the day, we want to know how can you really build your marketing business? How can you build a business online as a complete beginner? And I want to break it down into six steps uh, to really get you started, especially for those of you that are new to the system, new to the business. Maybe you have some type of experience in um, in in the digital in the digital space. You know, there's e-commerce, drop shipping. There's a lot of different things we see online, on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram. Uh, but a bit of background about me before I get started, like Christian said, I do come from the nine to five world. When I started this journey, I started just with the investing side. Those of you know, we are partnered with a platform that offers us that offers us investing and, and trading education, really the financial literacy aspect of things, which is very huge. And, and a big part of business is being involved in a business that solves a problem, which many of you are right now. And so you're definitely in the right space because a lot of people have money problems and they want to solve those money problems. So what better way to solve those problems than learning about financial literacy, investing and trading? Those are important skill sets that you need in order to make sure you're making your money work for you in the right way. Now, of course, a lot of us, maybe you have a nine to five job, part time, full time, whatever your situation is and you're making that money, it pays the bills, it takes care of the essentials. But when, when it comes to learning about investing and trading, it's like, well, those of you that are exploring that space, because I know some of you maybe are only focused on the marketing side, some of you are probably exploring both. I do both, by the way. You, you really want to learn how to make money, but you can't make money with zero dollars in investing and trading. And so this is where this opportunity of digital marketing, affiliate marketing, network marketing comes in place because you have the opportunity literally right in front of you to make extra income aside from your job to help you make your money work for you when it comes to investing and trading. Now, of course, some of you that aren't interested in the investing and trading side, maybe you're more like, oh, you know, I'll do that like, like passively. I really just want to build my money and build my wealth and multiple streams. And I want to quit my job. Perfect, because you're going to love this as well. Uh, so basically, as a complete beginner, and many of you have, you know, mentors that are guiding you through the step, you, you as soon as you signed up, they, they introduced you to uh, the team website, they give you maybe a bit of a background of how our culture is, what the team's about, and what the next steps are. But I really want you to uh, take, take notes on this, because these are six steps to recruiting as a new person. And we use the term recruiting. Recruiting, some people frown upon the word recruiting, but at the end of the day, this is what everybody does, okay? A lot of big businesses recruit. I was a manager at the bank. Those of you that are familiar with uh, TD, I, I was a manager there and there were um, hiring events, but really I was recruiting for talent. I recruit talent. I'm not just going to recruit anybody to work at my branch. Uh, if I'm looking for a, um, a teller, I'm going to recruit the best of the best. If I'm looking for a financial advisor, I'm going to recruit the best of the best. It's not just hiring. 
because hiring, you could hire anybody. When you recruit, you're looking for specific things and you're using a specific process to make sure that you're working with the best of the best people. And that's what we do here. And those of you that signed up, you better believe the person that got you started, they don't just sign anybody. They don't just sign anybody onto their team because they want to work with the best talent. They want to work with people that are actually hungry for results, hungry for success. Because look, a lot of people message us all the time. Uh, myself, Christian, Megan, Edwin, and all the other leaders here and top mentors and coaches, a lot of people message us all the time. And sure, we could accept everybody onto our team. But those of you that have gotten on one-on-one -on -one calls with us, one of us, you better believe that the person on the call with you is making sure you're the right person and that they're investing their time into the right people. And so now you, those of you that are new, and even those of you that have been here maybe a few months or however long, learning the essential steps to really get you started is very key. And a big part of what we do, of course, is marketing. But marketing, what are you marketing for? You're partnered with a company that offers amazing products, amazing services, but you're also making sure that you're, you're, you're working with the right people. So how do you even get on a call with someone? How do you start building a business? How do you get your, your first two enrollments? How do you get your first commission check? Because all of you wanna make money, correct? Drop money in the chat if you're looking to make money. And at the end of the day, some people think, oh, money is evil. It's not that we're materialistic. It's at the end of the day, if we want freedom, money helps with that. Some people are into the materialistic stuff. They want to travel. They want jets. They want cars. Cool. Some people just want the ability to just do whatever they want. If they want to lay on the beach for two days straight, they have the freedom to do that. If someone just wants to send their parents somewhere for their anniversary because their parents work so hard for them, they want to be able to do that. That's freedom. That's true freedom. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be, you know, buying all these luxury things. If you like that stuff, that's fine. I love fancy things, but I mainly aspired. I started doing this because of the freedom, because like Christian said, I made a, I made really good money at my job. And if I really wanted to, I like I was close to six figures at my job and I could have made way more at my job, but I didn't have the freedom. So how do you make your first commission check here? By the way, those of you that received your first check or are getting paid consistently, how good does that feel? Those of you that are getting paid in this business, drop paid in the chat. And if you have your camera on, raise your hand if you're getting paid. I'm getting paid. Yes. That's the power of this business. And I'm sure all of you want to get paid. That's why you got started for one way or for one reason or another, for yourself, for your family, for your kids. And I'm going to show you the six steps you need to really look at in order to get to your first commission check. So write this down and I'm going to go over each one uh, in more detail, but these are just the, the six um main things you need to look at broken down into six steps as to how you're going to get to your first commission check. And of course, the sooner the better. And this is going to really help you because structured doing things in a structured way is going to get you to the result versus just saying, oh, I want to make my first $100 or $500 and not having a plan to it. You need to have a plan and it needs to be broken down. And that's what's helped myself and a lot of the other uh, top coaches here. And so number one is prospects. So you need to find prospects. What I mean by prospects, of course, people that are interested in what you're doing, people that are interested in what you have to offer. That's number one, prospects. Number two is peak, peak interest. I'll go over what that means very soon, but I just want you to write these down so you have it there. Number three is appointment, booking an appointment. Again, I'll go over these more in detail. Number four is expose, expose. Number five is enroll. And number six is ascend, ascend, A-S-C-E-N-D, just in case, <laughs> ascend. Um, so those are the six things you need to really look at and uh, learn how to do in order to get your first commission check. Awesome. Who has that down?
I'm sure if any of you wrote that, you feel free to drop it in the chat. You know, I know some people like doing that. Shout out to you guys. Okay, so let's get into the first one. Prospects. So what does prospect mean? Let's break it down. So here, this is where, like I said, the, the term recruiting or really looking for that talent prospect. So you, you the goal of marketing, well, why do people market? Why do businesses market? If you open a shop, let's just say here, um, who do I have in here? Let's say uh, Lisa, Lisa opens a store. She opens a store and she's offering, let's say products uh, in that store. And she just sits there and just has a store open, doesn't market anything. She's just sitting there. Is she actually going to make sales? Is she going to, and there might be people that go into the store and then they go in and they realize, oh, this is not what I want. This is not what I like. And then they leave. Is she going to have a successful business? Yes or no? No. And that's why marketing is so important. Because marketing, you're attracting the people that you're supposed to attract to buy your product or your service. And that's, that's business. If, if let's say a restaurant opens, a restaurant opens up and they just open and, you know, they, they don't really have an attractive, um, um, I don't know, attractive marketing, or maybe, you know, the, the menu is not too clear or whatever the case is, they're not promoting themselves on social media, or there's no real marketing behind it, how well are they actually going to do? How well will they grow? And so you got to look for the right people. Like fit personal trainers are looking to work with people that want results, people that are willing to invest to get the body that they want. Correct? Personal trainers and a real personal trainer that knows how to market themselves properly will be very successful. Same thing with nutritionists, uh, makeup artists, a, lo a lot of different niches and fields and professions. That's why marketing is important. So number one, you need to be prospecting, find, target, find targeted prospects. What does this mean? With your marketing, you're targeting a specific uh, person that will like what you have to offer that is looking for what you have to offer that is looking for the solution to their problem and that's really what you're doing and the first step really is your warm market i'm not going to get too much in detail into the different markets because you know that's a training in itself but i really want to break it down as simple as possible especially for those of you guys that are new so warm market what does that mean the first thing those of you that that recently got started or maybe you've even been with us for a while if you have how fun would it be to do this with a friend i'm telling you like how much fun if you have a circle of friends or even just one person that's talking about you know wanting to be free wanting to quit their job maybe not knowing what to do with school and they want opportunities for themselves how fun would it be to tell them like hey you know i found something and it would be so cool for us to do it together. Why don't you check it out? Like a warm market is the people around you, people that you know, people that are close, or even family. Christian mentioned earlier, I'm his sister. And sometimes it's not easy <laughs> with the warm market, especially when it comes to siblings or even family. But if you get it there, you know, it could end up being something great. And it's always nice to share your experiences and share your goals and aspirations with people that are close to you especially when it comes to celebrating achievements. So ideally, why wouldn't you want to have people close to you that are successful just like you or that are working towards a journey just like you? So look around, like really think about who do you have close to you that could benefit from doing something like this? And even if they don't see entrepreneurship as a long-term thing, but they've wanted to learn skills that we offer here, that we show people how to elevate in certain skill sets, then they will win, they will benefit from this. And we do a lot of traveling too, by the way. We travel, we go to events, and how, how awesome would it be to be able to experience that with people close to you that you actually care, that you, that you care about, that, um, you know, friends, family. Now, if that doesn't happen, it's okay, because me personally, I don't have any friends that do this. None of my friends do this. They're all in their nine to fives, which no hate hate towards them. That's what they chose. That's fine. But that's not for me. Now, social media is the next way to find prospects. Okay, social media, those of you that got started, 
I'm sure that you have a, a step-by-step or some type of idea of how to build your social media, your brand, your IG, your TikTok. That's very key. That's not the only way to find prospects, by the way, but it's definitely a great tool to use and to leverage in order to get to that next level. Because social media, you can reach a lot of people, a lot of people. And you don't even have to be in that country, in that continent, in that state, wherever. You don't have to be there, but you can reach. I work personally with a lot of people that are not in Toronto. There's a few people in Toronto that, of course, I work with, but the majority are not in Toronto and majority are not even in Canada. And I've been able to connect with them. Why? Because of social media. Why do businesses advertise so much on social media? I mentioned this on my IG stories, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, where before you would see a lot of uh, banners and banners and posters on public transit when you would take the bus or the train. Now you barely see anything. Why? People don't depend on that anymore. It's an old school way of marketing. Now everything is on social media. You see plastic surgeons on TikTok promoting their stuff. You see uh, police officers, you see lawyers, you see doctors, you see even people in their nine to fives. I've seen bankers use TikTok to promote themselves, to get clients at their job. Like it's huge. And so social media is a great way to find prospects. And of course, other people's warm market. What does that mean? So if you, maybe you have a friend as an example. So let's say, let's say Lisa is friends with Rachel and let's say Rachel is not interested in the business, but of course she is because she's here. But let's just say as an example, Rachel was like somebody else. And Lisa's like, you know, I have this thing happening and it's so cool and blah, 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 and all this. And then, but let's say Rachel's not interested. Lisa could actually ask Rachel if she knows anyone that would be interested. Or maybe Lisa knows some of Rachel's circle or friends that she can connect with and look through that and really see like, who is there that I can show this to and and who is interested who have I heard before talk about wanting to learn about investing and trading or who have I heard before talk about wanting to learn about an online business even if they haven't mentioned affiliate marketing or network marketing they someone just said hey I would love to learn how to make money online or or, I want to have my own business or anything really pay attention so now when you guys go out with your friends Don't just go out to go out, go out with intention and actually pay attention to conversations rather than being on your phone. Look, I know we're distracted on our phone. We build our business. We make money through our phones. Cool. But if you're going out with friends, actually listen to conversations because one of them or even a friend of a friend might say something that could trigger and that might lead to them wanting to do this with you. So those are some key things to look at when it comes to prospecting. Of course, in person, in person, how many of you, like raise your hand if you're on camera, how many of you go to the mall? I know a lot of us do online shopping, cool. But maybe it's time to start going to the mall again, in-person prospecting. A lot of workers there look miserable, (laughs) I'll tell you that. Like they look very unhappy. And the best way to connect with people, and you don't even have to present the, what you're doing. You don't even have to say, Hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning how to make money online because you might turn them off. Just connect with them, build connections, get their Instagram. If you have your favorite store at the mall that you go to, how about you get that person's name, ask for their name. So then next time you can go in and say, Hey, hi, um, hi, Brian, or, or hi, hi, Michelle, or hi, Dakota, whatever the person's name is, say hi to them with their name. People love when you remember their name. That's a key thing to building a connection. People love it. And if you make that familiar connection with them, then guess what? Chances are it'll be easier to get their Instagram, to get their contact info. And once they, and you don't have to even say anything. And if they're the right person, they will look at your content and the stuff you're posting 
and they will naturally just reach out to you. Or maybe you have an event happening in your local city, in your town. There's somebody that you can invite. But connecting with people as much as you can at restaurants, go to places that you actually like. If you're into fashion, go to fashion events and connect with people. If you're into just networking events, there's a lot of business networking events, go to these events, connect with people, build relationships, be genuine though. Don't just connect with people just to connect and try to get a sale, like actually be genuine. And that's why I say, go to things that you like, connect with people that you actually relate with. You'll see the big difference. And this is a key thing of prospecting. You're not just sitting around and waiting for people to reach out to you, but also doing the action of going out there and connecting. Now, once you've connected with people and once you've, you've you know, gotten a few prospects, number two is peaking interest. So how do you peak interest? There's a, there's a few ways, okay? So the first way is the direct approach where, you know, you, you can be direct. You can tell someone like, you know, uh, uh, like if someone's talking about them wanting to make money online, you can just be direct and tell them, you know, that's something I do. And if you'd love to learn more about, about that, see if you'd be a good fit, let's definitely connect. Let's, let's um, give me your Instagram. I'll give you more info and possibly uh, get on a, a call one-on-one. -on -one. Like that's a direct approach. Indirect approach is social media, showing what you have, lifestyle. And those of you that maybe say, oh, but I'm at home every day and I have nothing to show and my life is boring. How can you, how can you peak interest, by the way? I want to ask you all right now. And even those of you that are new, I want you to really think. Think about what, what attracted you to this. And those of you with more experience, like how can you peak interest or what have you done that's worked? I want to see some answers in the chat. cast the vision. How are we doing this though? Like, how are we peaking interest? And I'll give you an example. So um, those of you that are very into like the education side of things, showing yourselves when you're watching a learn live session, or maybe you're watching a live trading session, don't just watch it by yourself. Record something about it record ease it's easy it takes two seconds just record a video of whatever you're watching whatever you're studying and post it on your ig stories that's how you peak interest or let's say in person that's like like that's like an indirect approach um in person and i i've heard many people uh you know when we've met up here in toronto shout out to the toronto team uh whenever we're in public settings and and let's say we're at a restaurant and people ask like, oh, what's the occasion or what do you guys do? And then, you know, I, I, like the indirect approach is like, oh, you know, we're just making content, you know, for our business. That's what we do. That's like an indirect approach because it piques interest. It's like, oh, content for business. Like what type of business, what type of content as an example, that's an indirect approach, not being scared or holding back to kind of like peak interest in that way. If you're by yourself, uh, at, at a, at a certain setting, peaking interest. Uh, one thing I'll, <laughs> um, I'll give a shout out to Edwin, something I've, I've heard him do and what he's told me. And I, I think a few others have done this too, where let's say they're in a public setting with someone else and they're talking about what they do, but they talk about it loudly. So if anyone around them is listening, cause you know, people listen to our conversations, how many of you have gone to cafes and you're listening to other people's conversations and like you learn so much about them, right? So people are listening to you. So if you're going somewhere, indirect approach, whoever you're with, talk about your success in the business. You know, <laughs> like just talk and talk loud. Don't be uh, like, don't be soft about it. Like don't, don't talk low about it. Like, oh yeah, you know, like this, 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 like be loud and proud. Talk to your person. If let's say I'm with, um, if I'm with Michelle at a cafe, it's like, yeah, you know, that person I got started the other day, they received their first commission check and blah, blah, blah. Like 
just just indirect approach. You're talking to your the person you're with. Those of you in Ottawa right now, your challenge, go somewhere and do that. I've seen those pastries and they look delicious. <laughs> but uh, how about you do some of that too? Um, but that's just an indirect approach. So many different ways. And again, each of these topics could be trainings in themselves, but I just really want to break it down like this so you guys are familiar and have the, the, the basic formula of how to get to your first commission check. Um, now, of course, the social media approach, peaking interest, the content you post, the pictures of your traveling. Yeah, you can you can post, you know, travel. And this is one key thing, by the way. Don't be cheesy with your content, please, because a lot of you will post travel pictures and every single travel picture, you're like, I'm so grateful I can travel and I have the freedom to do this and this and that. We get it. <laughs> OK. And look, I was guilty of this, too, at first. But if you're always saying, I'm so grateful, I can do, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, like, I can do this, I can do this on my free time, I can do this. Like, people see already, you don't have to like blurt it out every time, just you traveling and, and you showing a picture of you on a plane, you showing your, a picture of you in Florida, in Vegas, and wherever it is you're going, or whatever lifestyle you're doing, people see that and it already interests them. You don't have to like re-say it every single time because if anything, it comes off cheesy and it comes off too salesy. It's so much better if you just post it, maybe a cute little message, a motivational thing, or maybe a fun thing, but it doesn't always have to be so salesy, but that's basically a social media approach. Now the referral approach of peaking interest, same thing. It goes back to, um, you know, at like if, if someone, I'll, I'll tell you a trick. So if you have someone that you think could be a good person that would be interested rather than asking them directly. So if I were to say, let's say um, we have Alexander. So let's say Alexander, let's say I met Alexander and instead of asking him if he's interested in the opportunity, I would say, hey, Alexander, by the way, I have this like event happening um on how to make money online do you know anyone that would be interested in that and i wouldn't even ask him so he would feel excluded and he'd be like wait what making money online like what i'm i'm into that why like can i do that and that's another way of peaking interest of referral approach where you're asking people do do they know people that are interested or do they know people that want to do this or that and it's it's a great way to kind of also have that FOMO effect, fear of missing out. And those are just some techniques that you can do to peak interest, the referral approach. And so it's, it's, it's an interesting technique. Definitely try it because you might actually have that person say, hey, I want to come. I want to join. I want to check it out. I want to see what you got. So that's number two. Number three, okay, so let's say the first step you got your prospects, you know, war market through social media, you have some people, you pique their interest. What do you do now after you pique interest? Well, you're not just gonna have them sitting around waiting. You're gonna book an appointment. You're gonna set an appointment. Many of you came through appointments. Some of you probably came from events. We had a wealth summit recently, uh, very successful, very in high demand. So we're, we're most like for sure gonna be doing them more uh, regularly monthly. Um, but even still booking an appointment is very key. I know some people think, oh, I'll just send my referral link and have them sign up. But how great is it to build that personal connection and also really see like, is this person a right fit? Is this person really someone that matches my energy? Me personally, I love working with people that have the same energy as me. And I like people that are very hungry and ambitious and just like with that all in attitude. And I can really read that through an appointment. I can see through an appointment if they're serious or if they're not. I've had appointments with people where like they're cooking while I'm on the call or they're preparing a meal. And it's like, is this a bad time? And I can tell that they're not serious. So it's like, if they're that distracted, are they really taking their goals seriously? I don't think so. So that for me is a big red flag, <laughs> red flag. And I'm like, no. So that's why I love booking appointments with people. Appointments are very key. And you have all of you that are new, leverage your mentors. 
your mentors are very key. Leverage them for these appointments. And eventually you guys will be able to do your own one-on-ones, but leverage your mentors. Appointments are very key. You get to know the person. Also answer any questions. Sometimes some people will get a, a link to register and they get stuck on, on a, a certain part. And, um, and, and then they, they, they just leave it. And then time passes, they forget, you might forget an appointment. It's like, okay, you're ready. Let's do this before spots fill up. And, or if there's a campaign happening, you know, let's do this before the campaign's over, the promo's over. Appointments, very key. That's the third step. Very simple. Um, now, the next one, expose. So expose ties into the appointment. So the appointment is you actually booking it. Those of you that have a Calendly link, by the way, if you have a Calendly link, perfect. Uh, if you don't, make sure you set a Calendly link up because that's very key to booking the appointment. Now, exposure is uh, another way of doing things, not necessarily just appointment like one-on-one -on -one through Zoom. How, how can you create exposure? Basically, what I mean is presenting the opportunity. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to see some answers. What are some ways to expose people? Aside from just booking the appointment and one-on-one, -on -one, I'm talking about like other ways. Stories, like really, really think, especially now that, you know, things are not so much as online as they used to be, really think about it. And webinars, by the way, is one way, which is why, you know, we have things like the Wealth Summit, Facebook groups, yes videos some people use videos social media yes offline meetings absolutely offline meetings one-on-ones and i mean one-on-one -on -one in person too but be safe right like <laughs> don't just go to anywhere and meet up with anyone uh, but some people you know the old school way you meet up with people at a, like a starbucks at a cafe home meetings um, some people like if they have the space and at their home, they they'll invite people to their place, people from their warm market friends, like if you know, um, hotels or even uh, like different venue spaces where you can create small small events, maybe small um, master classes, masterminds. A lot of great ways that you can create exposure. And look, I'll tell you this right now. Some of us feel like our first event needs to be super huge. A lot of times, the most successful events come from starting small. And if you have that willpower, that ambition to really take your business to the next level, yes, creating exposure in person is always key. And at the end of the day, you might have, as an example, you might have 50 people online on a webinar, but not many of them will, will necessarily get started right away because there's, it's still online. But what if you had 50 people in person, 50 people in person at an event? Chances are a huge chunk of them will actually get started because it's that in-person connection, that in-person interaction. They see you. They see you move. They see you speak. They see you interact with them, engage with them. They feel that in-person connection. How many of us say that in-person events are so much better than live uh, uh, online events? Think of going to a concert. You go to a concert. I remember COVID, there was a bunch of like online concerts. It's so different. Yeah, you're watching the artist perform, you're listening to your favorite music, but think about in-person, a concert in person, you feel, like in your body, that that music, the, the beats, especially with the loudspeakers everywhere, and just the energy of everybody feeling excited, the, the artists, they're speaking, and you can hear their voice live. That's the difference. And so if you even can start, if even if you can do an event in person, even with just 15 people, 20 people, starting like maybe a bi-weekly thing like that, where you're hosting small things and eventually building it up. That's a great way to build exposure. Think about it. And it also builds credibility because you're 
constantly showing these things on your social media versus just doing one big event event maybe once every two months or so you have something regular um that's the key thing to exposure the fifth one is enroll okay so once you expose your people now you enroll them congrats you've made your first commission check um and that's where you you know acquire your um your new customer if, if they're just focused on like the the investing and trading side you know they're just a customer they're a student to the university and things that we have to offer or you know there's someone that wants to learn under your mentorship for what we're doing right now which is the business side of things and you know that's that's your new your new rep representative some people you know new you, you can call it new new mentee new partner new representative a uh, new distributor, like there's a lot of different things you can call them, but you've enrolled your first person. And that's the fifth step. The fifth step is enrolling. Super easy. That's it's it's just simple, straightforward. But the sixth one, which is ascend, what does ascend mean? I want to see if you guys uh, can figure this out. How are you making your person ascend? <laughs> what does this mean? level up success i'm just gonna plug in my charger for a quick sec my laptop's gonna die um okay escape the matrix <laughs> yeah um a lot of great answers Ascend is basically getting on, getting them uh, on the next step of their journey. That's what ascend is really launching them properly. So those of you that are new, that have been with us for maybe less than a month or three weeks, however long, you're probably thinking, oh, like, how am I going to do that? I'm so new. I don't know. This is where you leverage your mentors, by the way. Um, and I know champions. Uh, we have great systems to make sure that our people are ascended properly, or launched properly, to make sure that you guys have the step by step of what to do next after you finish your orientation videos, you know, those launch videos, um, where you see Christian on the launch channel, uh, the website, the champions one. So ascending is really the sixth and final step. And it's very key to building a sustainable business. Why? Because you're not just enrolling someone to enroll. Okay, you're not just doing that. Because those of you that got started, by the way, that are new, how upset would you would you be if let's say you signed up and then your mentor just like kind of left you to the side and didn't show you what to do next? Like that, what would you do? Be honest. What would what would you do if that happened to you? Write it in the chat. Be mad. <laughs> It wouldn't be a good experience, right? I want to see some answers. Feel lost, feel abandoned. <laughs> yeah. We don't want our people to feel that way. And so that's why if you're really looking to build something sustainable, you need to make sure your people are taken care of. Now, look, I, I get it. There's going to be some people that are maybe more focused on just the affiliate side, but this is where you get to leverage your mentors. That's why you have mentors that work with you because they're a support to you. Um, and at, at the end of the day, if you're new, you're not gonna know everything perfectly, but you have your mentor there to guide you step-by-step. Step. And of course the community champions, like we're here to help you guys succeed. And those people that leverage their mentors um, to the best of their ability and, and the most are the ones that see the most success. And so ascending is very important. And that's a term that's used, um, which is, you know, making sure they level up, they rise up and really just get prepared and groomed for the next steps of really growing a business. And this is how you make sure that you get 
your um, number one, these steps, follow them, you'll get your first commission check. But number two, these are just really the essentials to recruiting, recruiting. These are the steps. It's not just, hey, I, I have this opportunity, come join, get on a call, sign them up, boom, that's it. No, that's not really the proper way. There's these little steps broken down that you really need to look at each step and really dissect it and see what can I do with this step that will make sure that I successfully move on to the next one every single time. Because you can't just go from step one to step five to step six. You have to make sure that you're understanding each one in between. But that being said, that's a wrap on the six steps of recruiting and really the basic formula to make sure that you're well on your way to build a solid business, a sustainable business, because that's very key. If we want freedom, we need to make sure we're doing sustainable things. We're not here for the get rich quick. We want real wealth, real, real freedom, not just rich for one month and then broke the next. So um, hope you got a lot of value. Hope you took a lot of notes. This is recorded, so it'll definitely be dropped in the uh, Champions YouTube channel. Yes, we have our own YouTube channel. So those of you that are new, you got a lot of resources. And um, very excited, those of you in Toronto, we have a Toronto event happening, live events. Who's excited for that? Yes, I'm definitely excited. And shout out to um, Dakota and Sean. I know they're they're um, working on some big things themselves over there, really making a name for themselves where they are. And I know some of you in, in your other places, shout out to the Netherlands as well. I'm doing big uh, in-person stuff there, regular meetups with the team. And that's what I mean, just creating that exposure, whether it's indirect or direct. Um, so those of you in Toronto, remember we have an event next week, I believe Wednesday, uh, and uh, you know more details will be dropped on that. And tomorrow we have a rich call as well. Tomorrow, Sunday, we have rich. So very important calls for you guys to attend. But that being said, I'll give it back to Christian uh, for any closing remarks. Let's drop some fire in the chat. I was very entertained that whole that whole training. Level up season. You know what, though? Like, this is the first time I think we really did a call with the proper culture for that. And I just want to give a big thank you to Rosanna for, for going over all that. Like, I wrote it down in the chat. I was following along and a lot of the things she said like really it was a good refresh for for me as well to go down and you know what you're doing as a new person and i said this to a few of you actually that like for me you know like when you're in the business for a while it's it's like you have to almost pretend like you're new again you know what i mean you have to bring yourself back to that early point because when you're like when you've been in this for a while like you'd sometimes forget and she broke it down perfectly so Massive thank you to her. Make sure you drop a thank you in the chat and, you know, post on your socials. If you haven't noticed, we're dropping uh, videos, like short little clips in the GC Champions channel of every, um, of every like uh, speaker whenever they do things. So if you guys didn't get a video yourself, you can put it on Instagram and tag them. But, you know, I'd recommend putting your own videos um, when you can. So it's not just the same background all the time. But that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, we have, let me just end the recording.